Whistler in Canada. The venue for the 2010 Winter Olympic Games is also the host track for the 2019 BMW IBSF Bobsleigh and Skeleton World Championships. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to beautiful BC, where we are ready for the second heat of four of the women's bobsleigh competition. I'm Martin Haven, alongside me, John Morgan and John. We've already had high drama in our first heat. Well, the track, Andrea Greco from Romania, but the track here, you can't make a mistake on this super speedway they have up here and this young Romanian team in their first ever world championship. They walked away. They will not compete in the second run though. Stephanie Schneider and out of Strack, they've had their own problems. She's crashed three times in training, made it down two times to qualify for the race. She's won two races on the circuit this year. Martin, she's happy just to be at the bottom and surprised to be in third place. But our gold medalist, Mariana Jamaica from last year's Olympics. She won the World Cup title this year. And her and Anna Drasic, they set the track record down. They were the first competitive sled down the track today. And broke the track record. They're in silver medal position because another team broke the track record. Elina Myers-Taylor, Lake Quasar Brakeman. Well, they had the best start. Taylor, who's had her issues with this track, she crashed in curve four in training. Well, she flew down the track, lowered the track record by 18 hundredths of a second. The men lowered it by over three tenths last night. Martin, there's perfect track conditions out here today. Yes, it is absolutely a fabulous day for sliding. And uh, since 2010, when the track record stood at 52.85 in the Olympic Games, we've seen it lowered progressively now down to 52.48 from Alana Myers-Taylor. She beat the previous track record, had just been set, sled earlier by Mariami Manka of Germany. Andrew Greco and Teodora Vlad finished at the tail of the field after that crash, and they will not go again. They had the right to as they crossed the finish line, even though it was upside down. Well, you can see in the bright sunshine at the top of the track, all the sleds going under final preparation, but the runners in the fresh air there, like the control steel, 11 degrees, and the track temperature down at minus four. That's a big difference. Normally, the runners are hovering around zero. The warmer the runner is, the faster it creates a slick of water on the ice underneath and, it and, and your speeds the sled up. And your runner has to be plus or minus three degrees to the control runner. So there is rules and regulations to how hot those runners could be. Yeah, definitely can't go heating them, but the sun's doing that for you. See the athletes warming up at the top of the track. There's Anne van Nguyen, House of Belgium, okay, absolutely yeah. furious with herself after her first heat. She'll be the ninth sled off the top of the hill. Uh, in fact, she'll be the eighth because we don't have Andrea Greco and Teodora Vlad. So first off will be Martina Fontenev of Switzerland. In this second heat, John, they go from last back up to first. So Alana Myers-Taylor uh, will go last in this heat. Then tomorrow we re recede and the leader goes off first in the third heat. And then we go 18 or however many survive down to one in the final heat. Second of four heats of the women's bobsleigh world championships in Whistler in Canada. Martin Haven and John Morgan watching Martina Fontenot and Irina Strabel getting our second heat underway. Brakeman, the hurdler from Zurich. They're in, down quickly and already in a little bit of a skid. Now she's probably going to hit the wall coming out of the curve here. Bang, that's because... She got into a, the take on too early. And Mark, if there's a place you don't want to make a mistake, it's out of the exit of that first curve. Well, you said that Steve Holcomb won his Olympic gold medal between corners one and four by being clean, and that's exactly borne out by Whoa! By what the coaches that, were telling us earlier. That's up to curve seven. Yeah. It's a five, six, five, curve five, four. This is the sixth team that's crashed there this week. The exit of five. And I'll tell you, Martina did not look very confident in the first run. The look on her face after the first team made me worried that the track had got the best of it. Uh, she hit a lot of corners and a lot of walls on the way down. It was a wild ride. And she and Marina Strabel will do a good job if they can hold on inside the step. That's your only protection is to stay inside now the that question cow. is, can they get by the finish line, which they do right there, the Omega clock? Now watch this track crew put the hook on the sled. The last thing you want to hear in bobsledding is putting the hook on your sled. Yeah. But let's hope the athletes get out. There's already one moving. Yeah, that's Irina out of the back. That's too bad. Martina yeah, just had no confidence yeah. all week long in training. This will end their world championships for sure. 
Yeah, she's not fit. She's got a, an adductor tear. And she was really, yeah, a little bit apprehensive about the whole thing. Second World Championships. She's They're never raced up. here before. And so that's a real shame for them. End of the season, not the way you want to end the season. It's a break, woman. And, you know, for the drivers, they really feel a massive responsibility for the crew. She's crashed, but she's also crashed late. on behalf of her late, brake woman. Late, yeah. late. You just, you know, the brakeman's told if you feel the sled, throw it back down to the right. Always upper runner pressure, but no chance for yeah. anybody to throw that sled down there. And there's a chance the sled will come back up, but up there, curve four, five, six. It's a minute, and a, one hellacious minute to come down the track upside down like this. But they're taught, you know, you can't practice for crashing, Martin, no. but they're told to stay in that sled, stay in the cocoon. You saw both athletes walk away. Well, they're clinging on to a tiny little pair of metal handles on the floor of the sled, but still the speed they came across the bottom, they're still doing 62 miles an hour. That's a motorcycle crash. Now the crew will have to go clean up the track. See that little bucket they have right there? They throw some water and some snow. And they take it out like a little mason. There's Arena. There's the doctors checking their eyes. Concussion protocol. Now they're looking for parts of the sled, too. You can see the grooves. Well, yeah. there's a few grooves in there from uh, crash sleds. Uh, Nick Polinato, uh, the two man yesterday, crashed in the same spot, Mark. Yep. One thing is to crash like we saw in the first heat. The Romanians crashed down in curve 12, 13. That's only another 10 seconds upside down, eight seconds upside down. Here we got about a full minute upside down. Yep. Yeah, it's a, it's a hard ride down, isn't it? A two minute time on what's a 50 second track. So you just yeah, do the math yourself and you can work out how. Dr. Eugene Byrne from Lake Placid right there. You'll go and check the uh, yeah. athletes. Well, there's Irena, Martina looking a little bit there, second yeah. hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Coach Christoph Langen will be uh, very concerned about the so state of both the there's athletes. There's the mason work right there. So they slush that in. So, but use, those grooves shouldn't have any impact. The sleds runners will be to the left or right of that. Yeah. You know, it's where on the pressure points, if there's grooves, that's what they have to slush in. And particularly if it's taken chunks out of the track. This isn't like Calgary. It's not so brittle, the ice here. There's Martina still with her helmet on. She's going down to the bottom of the timing tower. They've got a little medical room there. And the girls will get checked over. Corey Holes, friends and family up, up from next. Vancouver. If that's not her dad, I don't know who is. Let's go, Corey! <laughs> She's next. Well, listen, you know, wonderful to be able to slide at her local track, to have her friends and family here. But she's in the little glass building there, right beside the start, keeping warm, trying to stop those nerves jangling. A bit of a wild ride down the first time with Melissa Lottholtz. Lottholtz, the winner of two of the last three World Cup races on this track behind Kaylee Humphreys. Humphreys won the Olympic gold medal in 2010 here. Sandra Kiriasis won the next year with Stephanie Schneider, who we'll see driving later. So notice the, uh, you know, they're taking off their warm-ups, but notice the little shoes they got on. So those little 16th of an inch spikes. You see that little protective uh, shoe that they wear over it? Yep, got to make sure those spikes are free of ice as well. It's very so Martin, easy for them to pick up ice and snow. Martin, the last sled down of the first heat crashed. Right. No, second to last, and now the first sled down of this heat. We had gone 62 sleds with only one crash, and now we've got two of the last two sleds down. All right, well, Corey Hall was a little sore after training, but she's still smiling this morning, ready for the start of this race. Getting the second heat of the Women's Bobsleigh World Championships back underway. Big intake of breath for Corey Hall of Canada. After the first sled down, Martina Fontenebra of Switzerland has crashed. So she and Melissa Lottholtz, lightning on the back of the sled, getting ready to go again. That's a bit of a loose run for Corey. She's ending her second season in the sport. She's been driving now for two years. 
they reckon that a bobsledder will probably spend no more than a couple of hours a year in total time elapsed on an ice track. Surprised they got him out so quick and they still haven't cleared the track. Well, they'll have been given the two minute warning to come out of the start hut. They haven't started sled. that 60 seconds. Oh. There it goes. So the sled goes into the grooves now. The team must cross the start beam before it counts down to zero. Corey Hall came out of the sled train, really holding her shoulder. She banged her shoulder the day before. She got a snigger in that shoulder, and then she was in so much pain she could barely get into the transport. I asked her about it. She said, I've never hurt my shoulder before. And she banged it up, got a snigger, and it's still haunting her, Martin. She's still in a lot of pain. Yep. But really pleased to be sliding here in her home world championships. This is where the Swiss just crashed. Yeah. She's through there. Much better lines than she had in the first run. This University of Lethbridge athlete, played soccer, and volleyball. She's also driving the woman with mon she's driving monobobs. Yep. As is her great woman, Melissa Lotholz. Lotholz won the monobob race in Calgary ahead of and Cynthia Appiah. You don't know about monobob, it's a full medal Olympic sport at the 2022 Winter Olympic Games. Now, what has she come across the line in 53.65? That's 300 faster than her first run, Martin. Yep. Same exact start time. Much cleaner in the track. Can you hear the family there? First World Championships, two heats and four down. Yep. Put him over there. Start, look at Loholtz in the back. I mean, she's a silver medalist in the last two World Championships with Kelly Humphreys. Yep. And these lines here, much better in this run. Watch the back end of the sled. Good lines there. And then here's that nemesis to 50-50. But 50-50's only got one of the two sleds so far. That was great right there. She looked hugely more relaxed in that second run. And look, there's the smile. So there are your leaders, Corey Hall on the left, Melissa Lodholtz on the right. And right with her back to us. Next up is a rookie. Elena Osipenko has never started a World Cup race. So her first World Championships, Anna Parfen over behind her, only five times has she started a World Cup bobsled race in a women's game. Did she do some model bob also? She has, yeah. she has indeed, yeah. So Osipenko, the third of our Russian sliders. Yeah. To meet her for the very first time in Calgary last week where she didn't race. 5.31 in the first run. 531 in the second run. Now the loop out of the first curve. The drop off there, seven oh. stories, and that's not the exit you want. Big skid into corner two. 700s is the advantage of, of Corey Hall. She had 1900s from the first heat. Corey Hall had a much better second. Oh, oh she's got another one. That's no one's there. That's a six. That's exit of six. Six. That's no one's crashed there all week. So I don't like this push bar being out though. No. Well, that's you saw that when uh, Cody Vasky crashed in Europe. The push bar came out and actually got torn off in the crash. So for the next week, we didn't have a push bar. I had to push on the cowl of the sled, old school style. Mark, but curve four, five. Well, we've seen all the accidents, and today we just saw two consecutive sleds in three here, two out of three. But the transition four to five yeah, but there's no is, still getting the, is still sending them late out of five into six. We haven't seen problems like that in six. Both sleds yeah. were way up, way too high in the exit. Yeah. So that's right, strange. Well, there's the hook again. It's, it's very different from how it was in training for the women. And again, they crossed the finish line, which is there by that finish arch and the Omega clock. If, you'll put, if you put those two sleds side by side, it, those were mirrors of each other. They were just hard to believe. And, and again, I haven't seen sleds do that all week. We've seen them come off their light, maybe in, you know, on two runners and yeah. flop down, but they got up into the part of the curve. Way up, way up too high there. Yeah. Same as Andrea same? Greco, that's the same crash. Greco was done. Oh, Parfenova almost thrown out of the sled there. Greco was down at 50 50. This was the, uh, this was the uh, Martina Fontenay. Uh, sorry, Fontenay's crash. Yes, yeah, exactly. So right. this. Yeah. Well, 
now the tracks really good now they're still well, you can see the brake woman is out but her driver here she comes elena osipenko the medical crews are with her there's our track yep. crew and our sculpture now that's see that groove there that's where the runners will come off yeah. that's the exit of the curve and same thing here you can see the gouges yep. so what you want to do is those gouges there i don't know if those gouges would encounter any part of the sled it's in the middle part of the track but they still if they're deep enough they want to make sure they smooth them out yeah and this stuff basically freezes on impact as you say it's sort of slushy ice yeah. this is the take on a seven this, this, there are some marks there that can definitely yeah. affect. And the problem is, you know, that the gouges are as wide as the runners. If a runner gets into those, then it starts to drive the sled, and the driver doesn't have the control they need. See the way he waved his hand to see, yeah. wanted to see if there was a hole there. Yeah, That's just more cosmetic it? looking there. Yeah. So wherever there's a, a you know, a, a space, they'll drop in that little piece of slush. It's like a big Slurpee. With Martin, we went. 65 sleds with only one crashing for the main program stop that? the last night, and <laughs> now we've had three sleds in the last five. Yeah, just checking the hole in the ice there. That's where the timing beacons uh, send their little signal across the ice. So just making sure there's nothing blocking that. This is the tallest ice guy I've ever seen in my life. He's about six seven. Okay. Yeah. These guys are all do these guys do drywall in the summer? I would think it's yeah, you know. the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, you can see the runner marks. You can see yeah. the real runner marks right above them, about two feet. Where it's the lower, mat. This is yeah. lower runner. That's your lower runner. they got to make sure that's smoothed in. Yes. Oh, look at them. Sporting the Canadian plaid. Our leaders, Corey Hall and Melissa Lotholtz. Well, there's nobody driving a bobsled or breaking a bobsled who doesn't know what a crash feels like by this stage. We're hearing that uh, Elena Osipenko is out of the sled. There she is, in fact. Tender. Yeah. I think her world championships are over. She may not be coming back for another trip tomorrow. She is definitely staggering ar around a little bit it's very perplexed that the yeah. curve six there's the blades now those things are not flat if you put yeah. two of them together there's a part of it the the blades that'll touch that's the rock on the runner and people have the rocks a little bit more forward than they do center depends what track you're on the last great black magic in the sport is in the runners here. yeah now, they all have to be made from the same basic steel composition, so you get a blank, and then you can grind it the way you like. And uh, you can have anything from, it'll be from about four, four and a half millimeters wide, which is a narrow runner for uh, warmer, uh, for colder ice. Uh, now the trend is for fat runners, six and a half up to maybe even eight mil, which is, so from the width of your little finger to the width of your thumb, that you say that's that's the kind of width well, of the, the contact patch. And if it's a really warm, warm day, then you want to have a bold runner, so not so much if it's in contact with yeah. the ice, but on what's really, really, really hard, then you want that runner to be extended, that middle part rock. Well, we're still waiting for the sled to be removed and the track to be free for racing john this 2010 winter olympic track being open now for a decade and it is still as much as a challenge today as it was on day one it's the super speedway what daytona and talladega are to nascar racing you know this track here you know it's get in get down let the momentum and the gravity take over curve one so important falling out of a seven-story building you can't tap the wall Curve two, a lot of people getting up late, hitting the wall here on the left. Curve three, okay, this is 60 miles an hour immediately. This is curve four, causing a lot of the accidents. Curve five is where they've been tipping over. This is where the last two sleds have tipped over here on the exit of six. Now in the Looters Loop, well, there's named after Pierre Looters because he tipped over there early in the career on this track. And now this is down where the speeds are 80 plus miles an hour. They call this part of the track Shiver. Well, it's because you're shivering because of the 85 miles an hour, 50-50 curve. Now into the gold rush, which is the highest part of the speed part of the track. Now into Thunderbird. Exit going uphill. You can lose a lot of time. Look at that track record set in the first heat by a lot of Myers-Taylor. She owns the track record at the top. 
She holds the track record at the bottom. She's our leader. Another four or five minutes of hold here on the track, Martin. And the uh, record in the Olympics, 52.85. There's a great look inside. Look at, look at the comfort levels of the bobsleigh. You can see the brake handles closest to us. The brake athlete sits on the bare floor of the sled. And this is the Chinese sled that's getting ready to go. So inside, there is no padding, no seat. There's a tiny little backrest in front of the handles there you can see for the driver to brace herself against. Now look at the, the handles in there, the runner handles, handles. It's little steering handles. I mean, the steering in these sleds have been molded in time. There's been different adaptations, but those ropes, Martin, have been around for a long time. Well, it is like the traditional soapbox cart where you pull on the right handle to turn right, the left handle to turn left. Last World Championships two seasons ago, Koenigsegg in Bavaria, Jamie Grubel Poser and Asia Evans were in the mix for the medals, and going off third this, last. And Jamie's had some issues with this track here, but on this day, she beat the track. She ran away with a bronze medal. Brian Scheimer loved it. Now the second place sled, well, Kelly Humphrey's Melissa Lowell's. We just saw Melissa go down. Well, Kelly, uh, you know, she's got four or three world championships, two Olympic gold medals, and does what she does best, which is drive. So they won the silver medal there in front of a huge Bavarian crowd. And a lot of Myers Taylor. She'd won the world championships in Winterberg. Only American ever to do that. She backed it up on this day with another world championship title. She had some issues on that track in Koenigsegg also. But on this day, Alana beat the track, beat the rest of the field. USA won its world championships. Trophy. Wow. And that was that was then. That was her second title in three years. There's your leaders, Melissa Lot Holtz on the right, and her driver. This year, Corey Hall. Say hi to Kaylee Humphreys. I'm sure she's watching with interest, taking a hiatus this season. I think we probably expect to see her back in harness next year, those familiar goggles. Let's get our women's bobsleigh world championship back underway. 15 sleds remain in the second heat. This is Yin Ching of China with Tan Yingwei, her break woman. Tan, the break woman, 22 years old. Uh, she accompanied Ying to the Junior Worlds a couple of weeks ago. They finished in fifth position. And Ying was also at the last World Championships in Königsee, Bavaria. So a whole new program being built up. John Morgan for China and the Games in Beijing in 2022. Well, Pierre Luders, the Olympic gold medalist for Canada, is their head coach. He coached Korea at the last Olympics. He coached the Russians at the 2014 Games. There's Luders there. And, but Luders went out and hired a guy named Andre Lange, the most successful German pilot almost ever. But he's got four gold medals, including a gold medal on this track in 2010. So the Chinese have gone all in with some of the best coaches on the planet. And Mark, the Chinese program has come so far, so fast, it's like they've been here. It's just a matter of time before they get good in these sports. It was geared from one to two after the hit on one. It's going to take away a lot of the early speed in the sled and a huge skid there. there. Here's the fourth five, which is causing a lot of problems. And watch out. No. Now on to six. This, this is, is where, where the crashes crashed. have been. Low. So when you see them that low, they're in control. Yep. Shades are still down because of the bright sun. Minus three to minus three is a good sign for this yep. Chinese athlete. But she was bleeding the time back. Is she in here? No. It's up high. That's good. And here. Oh. Whoa. 2200s up from the first wow. heat, still in single digits. She had to haul it off 11. She's pulling away. This is unbelievable. All right, so she's first ahead. time we've ever seen her. Right? Yep, ahead of Corey Holt. No, she did the last world, so 53 76. But yeah, no World Cup races for the Chinese women's program before we year. came to North America. Well, they're building a spectacular track, a really long Chrysler, which is they haven't built one of those Chryslers. 
I think since Nagano. Yeah. Nagano and they're saying oh, it's, they're saying it's no, no. over 400 the degrees. Meetings, yeah. So it'll be a three or maybe a four pressure Kreisel. Four to five. Bumps on to five, but gets away with it. I'm trying to think, Mark. My memory Too says bad. to me the last Chrysler was the one built in, Cray in Calgary. Because Alberville yeah, didn't well have be. one. Lillehammer didn't have one. Yeah. Nagano didn't have one. Salt Lake from the Torino. Yeah, that was the last one was built in Calgary. Going okay, old school. King Inga China leads with our first few sleds down. Lubov Chanik of Russia crosses herself, slaps a helmet. That doesn't look like she's any more confident. Look at the face inside that visor. She is very nervous of this track. 14th after the first heat. It's a little bit of a wild ride. Great woman Yulia Shoksweva has been with her on every trip, I think, in training, trying to bolster her confidence. Don't worry about me, just get the sled down. 5.31 start, so we're a little quicker. One. Well, Mark, there's one person we looked at. We go, like the Swiss athlete who came down, didn't seem very confident at the top of the track in training. Well, Martina Fontenay hadn't crashed in training. Lubov Czernik has crashed it at least twice in training. So she's got reason to be apprehensive. It's late there. He'll skid into nine. 39 hundreds doesn't mean anything on this track. And her brake woman, Shock Schwaver, clinging to the floor of the sled. Just right here's the problem. To this get is down. where she gets into her issues. She's through okay. it, though. Wow. So this is going to be a good. second trip down. 42 hundreds over the Chinese. 8 hundreds up when they sat down. That's a much tidier run yeah, from Lugov Chen. 53 38. 4 hundreds better than her first run. So Ying and Tan move out of the leader's box. Chernik and Shok Schwaver move in. Takes a deep oh, breath. I hope she sleeps tonight <laughs> because it looks like she's been haunted by this place all week. There's Yulia, her brake woman. She's a veteran. She'll have a bit of a smile on her face. <laughs> All right. A little late there. You see that the head slap left to right like that. And then look at this. Diving into that curve eight, nine. Listen, she drove wow. some good races in Europe, John, but she knew those tracks. Here, this is the land of the unknown. Runner tips. Oh, look, she not, believes. Not a lot of look steering. at that. She, yeah, she let it go. Her line. And she's crashed there twice, at least twice in training, maybe three times. Oh, oh. look at that. Look at that. Oh, there we made go. it. We made it. They don't even care about their time, Martin. Yeah. <laughs> well, next up, Misha McNeil. She does care about her time. Fifth equal here in the last World Cup race. She's got Montel Douglas behind her. Monty starting her first world. Misha, of course, finished eighth in the Olympic Games last February. And in her second World Championships. We asked the athletes who their favorite athletes are. Montel Douglas says Muhammad Ali. Hard to argue with that, isn't it? Misha, to me, shouldn't have been back here in this position, Martin. She's had a great season. I think she's a little tentative to track. Well, they go off 527, quicker than their first start. See if she banks you on the wall to the right. No, little good. better. Well, that's what she needs to tidy up the top of the track and carry that start speed down. This isn't okay. Now the exit is six. six. Okay. She's no, got a good she's line. Low. All right. Out of Luda's loop. Straight down to two. A little late three hundreds. She's going to have to find the speed line here at the bottom. 70.1 miles an hour. The Bobchanik was nice. quicker. 400. She's, she's starting to pull it away. 84.2 miles an hour. 400 is the margin. She should be the leader. Doesn't Just duck her head, gets though. Gets away from the wall. Five by the way. There's so. a smile from Lubov Chernik. So 53-38 for Misha McNeil. 100 slower than her first heat. And Lubov Chernik went 300s faster. 400s faster than her first heat. So the gap between them has gone from a tenth to 500s. Misha looked a little bit more in control in this run than she yeah. had the last run. And that's a confidence builder on this track. Look at the sled get through. Monty just every gets sled. thrown that's out of the That's just seat. not this sled. That's every sled yeah. has these type of entrance and exits to these curves. I mean, there's demons all over this track. Look how low she is. Yep. 
McCallan, great aerodynamic profile at almost 90 miles an hour with his coach, Lee Johnson, looking on. Nicole Folks of the USA with great woman Nicole Brungart. Brungart starting, and I think about her third or fourth senior race. Nicole Folks making her first appearance in a World Championships as a driver as well. Brinkman, Brinkart, her father played football at the University of Nebraska, like Kurt Thomas Savage did, who was on the night train team that won the Olympic gold medal there in 2010. Well, Nicole Boats, track and field, she was a thrower, a jumper, she played basketball, she even rode for Kansas State. But she decided clearly that facing the way she was going was a better option. She has her favorite athlete, David Robinson. Wow. Gets ahead. Oh. Almost turned it sideways there. I'm not sure you can back a sled in, Almost but did. that was close. Pictures were getting out of seven. She's in control here. 1400. She's letting it go loose. Trying Ooh. to do as little as there, possible. Though. 1600. She's growing the lead back again at the line. Much better. 53 38. 1500 slower. But uh, it looked a little bit more controlled on the first run. Exactly the same time as Misha McNeil's second heat, so the gap between them remains 14 hundreds. And that means Nicole Folk will be no worse than 12th overnight. Shauna Roebuck there helping at the back of the sled. First woman to win her in the international race on this track. pre Olympic test, look at this. Bang, airborne, that's the norm. Then get through there, then here we're looking for Exits, pretty good. Yeah, she was skidding yeah, already there, is, wasn't she? And this wasn't gone. good, though. That, yeah. Ooh, that was some sideways. You don't see too many tracks where you see a sled sideways like that. And pretty good out of the 50-50 curve. The articulation, the suspension there split pretty good. Then the bottom part of the track, speed. Boy, the <laughs> fastest speed so far is the Chinese. Slow down, okay. That's okay. <sighs> Oh. Here you go. Keys. <laughs> Keys, for Keys, the for the sled. Keys for the car. <laughs> and Van Nienhaus of Belgium was livid with herself after the first of our four heats. There's break woman okay. Sarah Ertz behind her. This is Anne's fifth go! World Championships. Her fourth as a driver. One of the shorter drivers in the field. What sport did she play? Basketball. 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 529 getaway. So they find a little bit more at the start, but it was in the drive that Anne was so livid with herself. That immediately, that's much but, better. Well, right here. Get, get out of four five. Bang, whoa. Totally airborne. Seven. Now she's in red numbers. This is what she did in the first run. She lost a lot of time in this section. 600 down. Oh, that's attainable hits. though. Yep. She was better through there than Nicole Vogt. Yep, that's for sure. Down to one. See that exit in, in uh, seven into eight was much better. That's why she's got great numbers. Down to three though. 88.4 miles now at the bottom. Runner. Ducks behind the cow. 800 pulls away. Hey! Tommy likes it. Hey! Tom Delahunty, always hard to read. He wears a different jacket in the men's race. He puts on yeah. a Dutch jacket. So yeah, but, two different but his heart is still on the sleeve of both of them, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Much better through seven to nine, seven, eight, nine, yeah. than Nicole Vogt. That's the difference between their times. But that first heat left her with a big hole to dig herself out. She's not as angry off. with herself this time down. No. So this is four, five. Watch the back end of the sled get airborne. It has to hit the take on. Bang. Yeah. The whole sled looked like it got airborne there, and then into the middle of the curve, and she didn't steer off too hard. This is down into Luda's loop. This is where the this is where she was more successful than Nicole Vogt getting out of this curve. Watch the back end do knots down below. Yeah, final Finish. corner. Here she ducks her head, and there she was gone. All right, well a mixed day. Not perfect. Yeah. Unfortunately. The track is clear for Mixed day for Anne. She's got two more heats to make up lost ground. Next up in our top ten, Ajezda Segeva of Russia crashed out of medal contention in the last World Championships in Koenigsegg, Bavaria. What a great hit at the start with great woman Yulia Belomesnik. Now, wasn't quite in sync. She won a medal in the opening World Cup of the season, her first ever in Segulda. 
heptathlete. Ooh. What tracks do you like? I like them all. Yeah. I said, well, what, what, what uh, sport did you like in the track and field? I like them all. Really? She really likes the Whistler track because of its speed, she says. Yeah. Originally from Krasnyarsk in Siberia, she's now moved to the seaside resort of Sochi. She likes the temperature change. Yeah, she's put it on coming from Nebraska and moving to Miami. Ooh, watch right. out here, watch oh, out. a little late, but she's got it under control. Gap is 1,400. 1,100's back down. by single digits. Oh, the top 10 overnight, though. Left yeah, she held on. Well, same run as Anne Van Nieuwenhuis, 53-31, so the gap between them remains. The track's starting to get a little slower. She's two tenths from her first heat time. Now, those two sleds have come down 53-31. The three previous, Nicole Boat, Misha McNeil, and Lubov Chanik, all 53-38s. Remember, there's been two crashes on the track. Yep. That, yeah, you know, that slows the track down, the time. Plus, they're scratching it up more. Look at it. Look at the uh, yeah. skidding. Whoa, yeah. boy, That's there's the been a the lot. Seven, yeah. Yeah. seven, eight is in the straightaway, nine, and then yeah. this is down on the speed part, the gold rush, climb into the Thunderbird curve at 89 miles an hour. 89.9 miles an hour. Wow. The last five sleds have been covered by seven hundreds of a second. Three with one identical time, the last two with another. In the top nine, Arthur Percy, Canada's Alicia Rissing with Cynthia Sewa Apia behind her. Cynthia has done a lot of braking in the last few years for Canada, now learning to drive sleds as well. Really surprised Alicia, who was the second athlete down the track, didn't have a better time than she did. She told me she crashed her sled in training, like last Sunday in paid training. And she hasn't recovered. Little rattle from one to two. This pair was sixth in the last World Championships, John, sliding together. 100th up. A lot of hopes and promise for her when she finished third in the pre olympic test 2017, the Pian Chung. This is her third appearance as a driver in a World Championships, and she went to Pyeongchang as well, but she slipped a fracture behind her just a second. Back in green. Oh, she's had some problems down here in this 50-50 curve. She crashed three times. Had that under control. Okay, so does she find more speed in Thunderbird? 500 she's hanging in there. She's going to be the leader, but not by much. 700s. All right, well, she's doubled her advantage. 53-27. That's the fastest run of the heat so far. And there are still the fastest eight sleds to go. She's got a little trepidation with this track. Yeah. See, now they ask, what's her time? Yeah. That's the thing about this track. It's just about getting to the bottom. Just get to the bottom and, oh, by the way, what was my time? Yeah. Any other track, before they even get out of the sled, they're looking for the scoreboard of the time. And this is why. Look at these lines. I mean, look at the perfect aerodynamics by our brakeman in the back. You don't even see her. Barely see the suspension, the split there, the articulation. The World Championships at home, so much fun. Thanks for all the fans who are coming out. Oh, where's my Good job, Riz. In the top eight overnight, Alicia Rissling leads oh. Najesta Segeva and Anne van Nieuwenhuis with eight to go. Katy Bile of Austria missed a day of the three days of training here because she was laid up with a sickness bug. Jennifer Onasanya, her break woman. And they lie in eighth place after the first team. For Cassie, 25 years old, this is her third appearance in the World Championships. Yeah, the first time we saw her, she's limping around with a, a broken foot. She, she had surgery on it. But then last year, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, she was winning Euro Cup races and doing good in the World Cup. Martin, she finished fourth last week in Calgary. Yep. Whoa, whoa that was late. Also the junior world champion in women's bobsleigh. That's why she did race in the class. Yeah. 1700 up. She snakes her way through that chicane above curve nine. And now we get down in the shiver part of the course. 50-50. This looks tame. Lost some time back. Yeah. Steered hard off 50-50. 
Jennifer Onusanya in the back finished fifth in the last World Championships, pushing Christina Hengster. 53-13. See all the 600s better. The Austrian coaches like that. Yeah. She's one of the few that just got close Good to her job. first heat time. Good job is right. I expect her to move up before this is all said and done. Yeah. Hi. Well, she's feeling a little less like a wrung out cloth today. I think. Oh, the back end of the sled in one, then she yeah. got into that skid there. That's worth a lot. That's too tense. And when you then here, look at that exit of four to five. Helen Upperton, the silver medalist on this track, texted us overnight and sort of said that that whole race where your speed is from that one to three. One more day left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That and tells you about the track. Well, and then, then, then she can pass out in bed again except she may be in the team race tomorrow. So seven sleds to go, and this is the second of our Chinese drivers, Wai Ming Ming and Wan Yameng, her break woman. Wai was first out of the start shed and had great speed down the ice, just 23 years old, World Championship debut. This is very impressive, man. Very impressive first run. First official race was November 2016, so she's Really, the one of their earliest drivers. <laughs> Great woman one on the back has started three official races before now. They didn't get very good start. 17th place in the first team, 536, 534 here. The line she hit, corrected. Let's see if she taps the wall here. Now John no, was great. first out on fresh ice. This will tell us how much of an effect that might have had for her. Well, she's 22 hundreds down at Catherine Brio, who started a lot later than she did yeah. and has a better start. So we'll see how much of an advantage she had in that first heat down. Well, these are nice looking lines. Yeah, That's she's not bad back. into nine, is it? She Good is look. losing a bit of time. She's going to fall back three or four spots. Oh, high. Gets away with it, oh. and again. You know, remember, there's, there's athletes coming down here at speeds they've never had before, yeah. except for the previous run. Well, across the line, she's not going to hold Eight her place on the top time. seven. Drops four yeah. spots. It's okay, there's Pierre Luters, their coach on the right. He's building a program. He says he likes his drivers. Got to improve the start times. Well, what's the target for them? Finish all four heats in the World Championships, Championships. and do whatever you can do. Get this experience, not just of the track, but of this the atmosphere. The Chinese team oh. told me five years ago, we, you know, before they got the Beijing bid, we'd be seeing Chinese bobsledders. I would say, no way. Here they are. Wow. And well, the other thing is, you know, with winter sports, you think, OK, what well, took you so long? But OK, she had to haul that off that a off. little in a hurry. Yeah. yeah. And that's why she hits the wall so hard, and the, the runners are climbing the wall. She's down. Yeah. Two heats down, two yeah, to yeah. go in her first ever World Championships. Hi. Absolutely. <laughs> Top six with two US sleds remaining. This is Brittany Reinbolt with Lauren Gibbs behind her. And Brittany with a good, solid first heat. Now she can try and build on that by getting another one firmly banked away. Lauren <laughs> Gibbs won a silver medal last year with uh, Alana Myers at the Olympic Games. Brown University volleyball player. 527, better 400 slower start. That's a better exit of curve one, though, that she had. She was pretty rough up here in the first run, Mark. She cleans it up. She could get the lead at the bottom. But Catherine Brill had, had some great speed at the bottom part of the track. Well, let's see what the BMW Campgrounds of America sled has got for Brittany Reinbolt. Nicely out of six, through seven, straight down the middle of the track. No skid. Down to five, that's good. Oh, no skid into nine, that's really nice. She was 600s behind, then 800s behind, to 500s behind, she's coming back. 200s ahead, this is what she did the first run. Good speed on the bottom part of the track. She is flying right now, she's been really enjoying this sled in training, and at the line, how far ahead? Well, a couple of clatters on the wall. 14, 53, yeah. 02. All right. Two hundreds faster than her first run. Mark, she cleaned it up on top. Don't be excited about this. Yeah, no kidding. Top six overnight. Nice Shana Robach, who won the first ever race on this track in 2009, the pre-Olympic test, breaked by Alana Myers. Yeah. Yeah. 
Now these lines up here, this is four to five, the nemesis for everybody. That sled doesn't get too airborne there. That was very quiet steering here. Do you see the sled split, the articulation? Hardly any. This is why she got very quick on the bottom part of the track. Same as in the first heat, she had the confidence there, but these yeah. taps against the wall, that might have cost her maybe ready? another half a I tenth. Brittany <laughs> Reinbold on the right, Lauren Gibbs on the left, your leaders with five to go. Final five sleds, heat one of the, heat two of the women's bobsleigh world championships. Brittany Reinbold leads. Next we get to World Championship rookies Anna Kola and break woman Leonie Phoebe. They've only got a hundredth of a lead over Brittany Reinbold at the bottom of the United States. 520 in the first run, 521 in the second run. Exit a curve, one here, not bad. Might hit the wall here on the right though. No, she gets away with that too. Velocity is the best velocity. She's 10 hundredths up. Better start, better velocity. Oh, no, that wasn't perfect. There's six where we see two sleds already crash. Seven, what's the back end of the sled here? She got hard on the seven as well. She's in the red Ooh, and... Pretty good there. Remember, Reinbold flew on the bottom part of the track. Yeah. Kohler, who missed last week's race in Konexy with, or in uh, Calgary with a sinus problem. She doesn't look like she's gonna do it. 900 back. Not sure she's going to find that in the final spots. corner. Two or three tenths behind the line. Wow, third 23 hundreds back. Catherine Brill moves ahead too. So wow. Brittany Reinbold will be no worse than fifth overnight. Katty Biles second. Anna Kola slips down to third with four to go. Lenny B. Big in the back. A bit of a bruising ride, these two trips. Four from Cologne. Okay, this is four to five. How violent is this? Yeah. yeah. Not bad. And then here, it's really high late. And that, and when you see the set, slight articulation split like that, she snuck through here, Mark. Yeah. But straight boy, up went down to the, the belly and yeah. then has to go up high. And again, mm. exit 50 50. Big steer to get it off. No speed in the bottom. So there's Anacola. Still not feeling great, I don't think. Lenny Thiebig, her first Worlds. Lots of friends and family here to watch. Four sleds to go. Christine De Brown and Kristen Bujnowski. Three World Cup starts this season. Two silver medals for this duo. And they are how far off the medals? Seven hundreds of a second. Martin, they started 15th in the first round with bad ice. I expect her with a good heat here, she could challenge for a top two. Back. Christine started as a great woman, so she's got fun handle strength. These two, yeah. 518 in the first run. Fifth fastest 15, start. 15, best start. Watch the velocity in the left, though. Oh, that's a great exit. Great velocity, too. She had bad ice to work with in the first run. Good runs here. She could really challenge for a top two. Little skiddy, but she's three tenths up. She's through that nemesis. Sleds are ready. Now she won't right be here. looking in her rearview mirror, John. She's looking at the top three oh. spots hungrily. Good run here, Martin. She's going to be right in the mix. Straight oh. up into nine. But That's Martin, good. 3,400. She's got a 1,900. She lost some time. Yeah. She needs to be clean down the gold rush trail. Here we go. Keeping it. Ooh. The lead alive. She's got to stay ahead of Brittany Weinbolt to challenge for a medal. He's coming back to single digits. Not too bad. That'll open up a little bit more. Oh, 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 3 12. Coaches, you can see the expression in their face. I think jump at 4, 5, 6. Martin, there was a little banging on up there. That 3,400s ahead. She was at one time. 3,100s ahead. Yeah. 19, 17, 11, and then down to 3. Yeah. She lost time all the way down. All right. Well, they are still the leaders with three this to go. Is up where you want things to be quiet. Look at that skid. Yep. It hits the take on. Two to three. Then here on the right side, and the sled is still skidding back. Yeah. It's three to four. And here, that's a hard hit there. Mark 3100 to the top on her home track, and then to only be head three at the bottom. Whoa. You only have to win by one. And she beat, <laughs> That's and all. She beat Reinbolt by yep. 12 hundredths at the start. So yep. she's beat her by, she's the leader, but should have been by yep. more. There's Christine, there's the Bouge. Three to go. 
Stephanie Schneider and Kristen Strack. Second fastest start. Stephanie Schneider started five runs in training, completed just two of them. She's got a history in this track from the last World Cup, too. Yeah. Crashed out in the last run of the last World Cup, November 17, broke her collarbone. 14 in the first turn, second best start. 15 this time, watch the velocity, watch her exit here. Give us the velocity right there, great exit. Yep. Not the best velocity, considering that she beat the, uh, the, at the start, she beat the Canadian team and didn't have the best velocity. But her problem, not up here, Martin, down below. Well, you know what? She better watch out on corner six as well. She gets that tucked away into Luna's loop. A little late on the exit oh, there. 10 to 23. Straight up. Next nemesis curve 11, 12. Here we go. The double pressure point. 10, 11. Oh, perfect. She gets through here 20. Yeah, she, she's perfect down there. She's through the place. has caused through a lot of concern. Yeah. Like her teammates. Oh, this is a much runners. better front. Oh, wow. huge skip to the line. 52, 85. Oh, wow. She was 52, 84 in the first run. That tells you much better run. She's picking up confidence, Martin. Kaylee Humphreys' fastest run in the Olympics was a 52.85. They've just matched that. Look how excited she is. Yeah. That's Anne Kristen Strack, her break woman. Super stoked to be in a medal position overnight. Shatters won a couple races this year already. These lines down here. Look at her get through. This is the 7 8 9 combination. That's as good as we've seen here in the 50 50 where she's crashed. Probably six times in the last two times she's been on this track. Perfect. That's one of the best lines I've seen in the competition so far. Bronze medalist in the Worlds in Winterberg 2015, pushing Kathleen Martini. Stephanie Schneider is the leader with two to go. Halfway mark of the Women's World Championships here in Whistler. Here's our Olympic champion, Mariami Amanka, with her ace in the hole. Annika Dracek back on the back handles of the sled. Dracek, the track and field athlete, you're the Randy Spee saw to track me. Just went, wow, that's the athlete I want for Bob. He must have kidnapped her and bundled her in the back of the van. I can't imagine them letting her go. Three, four years later, she's in the German military police. Whoever has it, we're going to get her to start to drive. 5.15 in the first run, 14 first run, 5.15 there. Not very good velocity, though. Good exit so far. Yamaika's has turned into a great driver. Yep. 2,500's up, but so was her teammate. That's Lee! Olympic champion, World Cup champion this season for the first time, and European champion. She's looking for the world to complete the set. To throw a good run down and tell Alana Myers Taylor to come and catch me. This is not bad. 3100s up on Stephanie Schneider. 39, she's pulling away. Track record is a 52-48. Myers, she set the track record before Myers took it away from her. She was 2600s up on Schneider. This is not going to be a record, but it's close. 52-64. 600 yeah. slower. Ready speeds to the left. Long time. That is a Coach. good, solid run from Yamanka. That really racks up the pressure. She's very consistent, Martin. Four gold medals this year. Her only time off the podium in Lake Placid with a fourth place finish. This is from an athlete who never won a medal in her life until the Olympic gold medal last year in Pyeong Chung. Yeah, now it's hard to stop her. Yeah. She's on a mission with good starts, but look how late she is here. Yeah. Whoa. Maybe that's the line, though, Martin, because she exited there pretty good. And in the back seat, he's going, get us down. Boy, it's tough to say to the athletes, don't steer on this track. Here in 50-50, there's no steering variance there. That's why she's got such a huge lead. You've got to have the courage, haven't you? You've got to believe. There's your Olympic champion, Mariami Amanka, with Annie Dracek. Next up, your reigning world champion. She's won world championship gold, two of the last three outings. Alana Myers-Taylor with Lake Quaza behind her, a first year break woman. Set. Now look at the synchronicity of that start, so well rehearsed. 5'11 in the first run. And Alana is such an athlete 5'15, 400 slower, can't make a mistake here. 
slight. Next to the three. Great. Quasa was in the 216. 216 was in the trials for the 200 meters. So she's a great sprinter. Yep. Plus, she, like Kerry Jones, the start record holder here, is a real pocket rocket. Only 600s up. This is going to be super tight. You've got your Olympic champion and your world champion staring eyeball to eyeball. Who blinks here? It looks as though Mariami and Anka Anka right now may have an overnight lead over Lana Myers Taylor. 800s, probably going to lose to 12, 14. He's going to beat her by quarter second this run. Wow, 52.87, so Alana goes 2,500 slower. So the 1,200s that Alana won in the first team, she gave it all back, plus 12 more in the second run. Well, in the first day of the men's competition, it was Justin Cripps, a candidate that led Heat 1 by 700s. The overnight leader, Francesco Friedrich, by 1,200s. Martin, the secret was their start time. They were 400 slower at the start. They have the same exact start as Yamanka and Drazic in that heat. Doesn't sound like much, but that 400s is worth 12 at the bottom. Yeah, but she lost 2400s in this run to Drazic and uh, to Yamanka. But she had a 1200s lead, so she's 1300s now. The start yeah. difference might have been tied. Yeah. Start. They're going to go back and figure out what happened to them at the start because they're well, 400 slower. It is not a two heat race, it is a four heat race. That's when Nick Taylor's here this weekend. Flew in at the final day of training. It was a surprise for Alana. Yeah. Four heat race. It was the World Cup. It'd be over. But yeah. There's two more tomorrow. Yeah, and 1,200s of a second. That's as yeah. close to a dead heat as you need yeah. to go to bed overnight with a real shot so at a four. third World Championship gold in four outings. But it is Mariami Amanka looking to complete the trophy cabinet. Olympic champion, European champion, World Cup champion, and she leads overnight in well, the World Championship. Very impressed with her, you know, her way that she attacked the course. Mark four, five, six. That line she had up in four, five was brave. And that's why she's the leader. She took a 1200 deficit turn into a 1300 lead. Yeah. Hanging out there on fat runners for speed, bravery, and skill required. There's your overnight leaderboard. Yamanka, Myers, Taylor, Schneider, and then behind 300s for fourth between Christina Brown and Brittany Reinbolt. Katy Bile moved up to six. Anna Kola slipped to seventh ahead of Alicia Rissling, Najesta Sergeva, and Moi Hui of China. And Van Nuenhaus in 10th position, tied with the Chinese sled as she recovers. And Andrea Greco and uh, Osipenko and Fontenev are three crashers in the first two heats. So drama in day one of the Women's Bobsleigh World Championships. Join us tomorrow morning for heats three and four when we find out who is going to win the 2019 BMW IBSF Women's Bobsleigh World Championships. So John Morgan, me, Martin Haven, and the IBSF TV crew here live from Whistler.